Welcome and thank you for joining us. This is part of our video series on the Criminal Justice Center, or the Justice Center that's being built here in Prescott today. I'm with Larry Smith. He is with DLR Group. Uh, a little bit about Larry. He is a detention design expert with more than 35 years of experience designing civic and public safety buildings. His experience includes design for police stations, shared police sheriff training facilities, 911 communication center, crime labs, fire stations, county jails, state prisons, and municipal and state courts. He is currently the project manager for a new 500 bed maximum security prison for the Arizona Department of Corrections. So thank you, Larry, for joining me. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate so it. I can imagine designing facilities like you have, uh, justice centers and courts and, and uh, prisons and such, comes with some requirements, some, some uh, restrictions, if you will. So tell me, some of the things that you have to take into consideration when you're building a justice center like ours, or designing a justice center. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the justice center, uh, you know, has, has the jail component and the courts component, uh, as well as a mental health component. So each of those has their own requirements uh, on the jail detention portion of it. Um, the, uh, the basic requirements uh, for inmates' rights and so forth are uh, handled through the American Corrections Association. Okay. And a lot of folks may seek accreditation through that program, but uh, basically they set standards, mandatory standards and recommended standards. And, and generally without getting into all the requirements, it really sets the stage for the environment, for the prisons and, and the operations of that. So there's square footage requirements for, for cells and day rooms and things like that, as well as environmental like natural light requirements, uh, ventilation requirements, so that it's safe and humane conditions you know, for all the occupants, quite honestly. Uh, other requirements for uh, the detention uh, portion is uh, a, um, the uh, uh, Rape Elimination Act, uh, Pre Prison Rape Elimination Act, which was put into uh, uh, a motion uh, probably about five years ago. And essentially this is to help, uh, again, in designing the facility to make certain that there are hiding spots, blind spots, where uh, you know prisoners could assault another prisoner, so so those type of aspects are taken into account, and then of course uh, for all the facilities there's uh, building codes, <clears throat> and for uh, detention facilities, which are considered one of the most stringent types of construction uh, of buildings, obviously because there's folks that are restrained, they're under the control and and uh, supervision of staff, you know for releasing them in emergencies and making sure that all the uh, safety precautions are taken. Uh, it becomes one of the most stringent requirements of the building code for type of construction. Uh, basically, you, you don't want to, uh, you can't have a detention facility that can catch on fire. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, fire sprinklers, smoke management systems, uh, for safety, uh, you know, non-combustible materials and the, and the such. So that it's, it's one of the most safest buildings that you could possibly uh, design for, for all the occupants. Uh, on the courts, on the court side, um, the uh, National Center for State Courts uh, sets a lot of standards for court design, uh, as far as square footages and and technology and so forth that's used in court facilities. And then the state administrative office of the courts of the state of Arizona uh, has a lot of their own standards uh, for the facilities for their staff that's in there, uh, as, as uh, well as security. Of course, there's a lot of you know very extreme security uh, issues that need to be taken into account uh, as we all kind of hear in, in various uh, you know security screening whether it be uh, you know the blast resistance of a building uh, standoff distances uh, for safety of the staff uh, as well as when they're coming you know and going from the facility yeah. there's um, the mental health component which is a very unique, unique aspect of this particular project where the the county has taken on uh, a program to really assist uh, the the community, if you would, as they're released from the facility, to take uh, take opportunity in various programs that may help them uh, to re-enter back into society. So this again is regulated by the state health department. <clears throat> so there's there's different aspects there. Uh, there's one area that's sort of an in custody area, if you would. It's called Title 36. Uh, in that particular area, because they're heavily supervised and the, the chronic mental health issues that you may have there. Uh, there's a lot of very stringent requirements for the safety of the occupants, uh, supervision of the occupants, uh, and again, similar to corrections, you know, size of facilities, the, the environmental conditions, 
uh, for those uh, for the occupants of that facility. Um, so it's it's there's a lot of lot at stake. Uh, a lot of studying has been done uh, early on, going back several years, quite honestly, uh, to uh, put the program together of what this facility may look like uh, to even start designing. Uh, under under the scrutiny of all these requirements. Well, it sounds like I hear safety a lot. Safety plays a large absolutely. role in everything. Yeah. No, ab absolutely. It's paramount and in all government facilities uh, and where citizens are being, you know, processed through there. Uh, and, you know, a jail is, is pre-adjudication. Uh, very, very few folks are there sentenced, and especially in this facility, right. because the entire facility is really made up of uh, kind of a unique uh, uh, justice system, if you would, or component, which is which we're calling an intake, transfer, and release facility. Okay. So it's not just the jail. What what it's all about <clears throat> is a to streamline the process for pre adjudication of folks that first are arrested, right. and then have their initial appearance, and then either released right away, or may they may be there for a few days, you know, uh, or released on their own recognizance or set up for for bail or or not with bail and then go through their initial proceedings for court and then come back for their official court proceedings uh, until they're actually, uh, you know, sentenced or released, mm -hmm. you know, from the judicial system. So I've seen the rendering. We'll put it up on the screen here. And so I'm guessing by that that we have a large portion of the design done. Um, what is your process? Where do you start and how do you know when you're done? Uh, basically, real simply put, is, is there's usually a program to start with. And like I mentioned, the county have been working with a lot of national experts uh, to put together what the program is. And, and the program essentially is is how they plan on operating it, uh, what's the size of it, you know, how many courtrooms, what's how many folks occupants should be in the courtrooms, how many uh, beds do they need uh, for um, uh, prisoners that are being processed of different categories, sure. such as dormitories or someone that may be potentially violent, right. you know, in a more the secure area. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so that program kind of sets the stage, and that's where we start uh, on the design side, and then um, instilling all the uh, all of the requirements, uh, meeting with uh, the occupants, the stakeholders, uh, you know, the facilities, the operators of the facility, the folks that are going to staff it, uh, the county administration, facilities, you know, what uh, type of facilities do they want for longevity, you know, to to last for the county as far as maintenance and so forth and so on. So all of that uh, is what goes into the design, and uh, essentially it's pretty, very intensive. Uh, this is a rather of a fast track project, so we're moving very quickly on it, which is not unusual for, for projects like this. And essentially we're, we're done when we have a complete set of documents, construction documents that's ready to go to the authorities having jurisdiction for plan review and permits. Uh, which there's several jurisdictions, obviously, that are involved in this right. with the magnitude of requirements that are needed. Sure. So are you done when those blueprints are finished, or do you kind of follow through? We, we follow through. Um, as in all construction projects, uh, you know, this project has, uh, you know, very reputable, experienced managers, construction managers, contractors that have been hired. Uh, but there's still questions that come up during construction, and uh, there's things that may need to change for various reasons, substitution of materials, products, this, that, and the other. And so that's where the architect and the engineers come, in, come into play. Uh, DLR Group is an integrated architectural engineering firm, so we have all that all in-house uh, for pretty much everything that's involved in the project. So we're uh, basically uh, the, the, the go-to people on design if there's any questions during construction where something may need to be adjusted, changed, uh, and or to monitor construction to see if it's in conformance, you know, with the documents prepared. Okay. You have designed this project for the, for the most part, um, and were there any uh, challenges, unexpected challenges, or just anything out of the ordinary that, that you ran into with the Yavapai County Justice Center? Uh, there always are challenges, David, in, in any construction project. You know, the, the analogy that I would make is every building that we that I've worked on, uh, even when someone says, hey, I really like this building that you did over here, can you just do that for me? They're never the same. They're never cookie cutters. Sure. They're always very unique. And so there's challenges with, with all of that uh, of, uh, you know, first of all, making sure that uh, even when you have the program that the client and the stakeholders need or want, 
that uh, there's adjustments. There's things they hadn't thought about, and so so we're you know we're that resource you know having national experience in these types of projects to bring all the different what ifs questions you know have you thought about this what would you like to do here maybe there should be adjustment in your program because of X Y Z or not yeah. you know so we bring all those to the table and as always there's there's challenges uh, you know there's uh, there's always uh, site challenges. Um, you know, typically uh, detention facilities and courts, uh, quite often they're not wanted in some person's backyard. <laughs> sure. Uh, because of, they think it's, you know, it's a negative sort of impact on the community and this and the other. Uh, I've been challenged with that on every project we do, every project all around the country. So it's nothing unique. And so what we try to do to be a good partner with the community is uh, you know design a building that doesn't look like it's you know it's not a prison it doesn't have concertina and all these right. lights and things right, like right. that. Uh, in fact, I've done facilities before you know in residential new development communities uh, and they've been built and they've been occupied and a few years later someone says that's a jail I thought it was a Home Depot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so that's 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 what we're after yeah. you know is something that fits with the community. Well, I know when I looked at that rendering. It, it to me it does not look it looks like a business building exactly and other than the the fence the high fence in the back um which again i know this is just the beginning it may expand later on down the road but i, I think it's a great looking building and I well thank you yeah thank uh, you we we strive for that it's a community building and it needs to be a, you know appropriate response uh, i mean certainly nothing lavish is you know everything is very practical it serves a purpose uh you know, because we're using taxpayers' dollars at stake. So, yeah. um, you know, the site was challenging and that it's very uh, tight uh, and there, there is no other site to put this. Right. And so we had to pack a lot in to a very small area. Most of the sites for facilities like this, you know, they're, they're, um, it's owned by the county. And in a lot of cases, it's not the, the best piece of property as a, from a developer standpoint. Sure. <laughs> you know, it's next to the landfill right. and right. there's a lot of... Uh, it's a drainage area, and there's a lot of issues that we have to deal with. But yeah. that's fairly common, yeah. you know, to to work with. Um, so, but basically, I mean, that's that's kind of the typical challenge. I wouldn't say anything necessarily unique, in, in my opinion. You know, having done this for a long time, it's it's pretty straightforward in the typical challenge we have, and uh, you know, budget constraints. Every project has a budget constraint, sure. and so we're very conscious of that from the very start. Right make sure that we're gonna you know meet that budget that's required yeah. uh, and use materials systems and so forth that are appropriate uh, most mostly have the longevity and and, and um, uh, facilities and maintenance uh, longevity uh, because uh, quite honestly f facilities like this uh, well they're like your historic courthouse downtown how long has that been around <laughs> right. long time yeah. uh, this facility's not going anywhere yeah. I mean it'll be here for many 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 years because it's a it's a desperate need uh, and a critical need, you know, for the community of a Prescott and Prescott Valley. Um, you know, as you know, um, prisoners are being moved from Camp Verde uh, for court every single day, every day, at a forward. large, significant cost. Yeah. And not only that, but a significant risk yes. in safety. Anytime someone's being moved, uh, there's an opportunity for something to happen. Right. Uh, and you know, anything can happen. And so what this ITR facility, if we call it, intake transfer release facility is all about, is when someone's, uh, someone's picked up by an officer somewhere for whatever, and uh, they feel appropriate that they're being booked uh, and at least uh, background checked and see what's going on, they take them to this facility, and essentially without going into the, facility, uh, into the details, uh, they stay in that facility for all of their adjudication processes, right. everything. And so when, they, when they're released, uh, it doesn't, the process doesn't even stop there. What Yavapai County is doing, which is very unique, is taking all of this a step further to reduce recidivism. And there's, there's a large um, population uh, nationally in, in most every facility, we're from 30 to 40 percent of folks that are going through the uh, adjudication process that have mental health issues. You know, some of them uh, minor, uh, some of them just were taken care of if they're on their medications. Right. Uh, and some of them are very acute, very serious. And so what you have at Pike County's doing is when these folks are released, uh, the mental health facility that we have uh, is a stop for them for some help, yes. it being you know put back into the community. Yeah. 
What do you need? Do you have a place to go? Do right. you have a job? Right. You know, do you need some help with uh, securing the job? Right. You, you know, getting back back to work. Do you need your meds? Uh, do you, you need your meds? Counselor. Very yeah. good point. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And so all of those are very helpful in the community, and it's and it's many many counties and and folks have tried to do this in the past because it's been a known issue for a long long time. And Yavapai County is succeeding. Maybe one of the, the one of the first in the in the country that I know of that I've worked on. Uh, other counties and folks have tried to set up facilities like this uh, for re-entry into society for folks like this uh, to uh, accommodate these issues. And there's always funding issues that get involved and complications. Yamapa County has broken through that and brought all the powers to be together to, to make this happen. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a very significant milestone. Uh, in fact, there's uh, American uh, Institute of Architects has a, a Corrections Association um, a program uh, that's national and, and that is being uh, conducted uh, here in, uh, I think it's November, and uh, highlighting Yavapai County and this particular aspect because it is such, uh, such groundbreaking, uh, uh, you know, a movement forward in reducing recidivism, taking care of these folks, so that basically it's stopping the revolving door. So many people come through the system, they're released, uh, and uh, you know, a typical scenario might be that um, you know they get a little disoriented, uh, they sell their medications because they need a little money, then they're off their medications, and then they're they're spiraling back into their mental health issues. They're disoriented. They're doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Next thing you know, it's it's somewhat related criminal, or there's or what what are we going to do with these people out on the street? Yeah. And they wind up when well, they wind up at the sheriff's office. Right. Now, what do we want to do with these folks? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's that's very very important, I think, yeah. in the community. Well, I, I'm very proud of the work that we're doing. I, I'm thrilled with the building that you've designed for us. I think people will be very proud of it for years to come. Um, I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you for having us. And I think you've got a. A uh, tremendous project here, and it's it's moving forward, and it's going to tremendously help all of you by County and, and the community here in Prescott and Prescott Valley. Well, thank you very much, Larry. I appreciate it, and thank you all for watching, and we'll get you next time.